What's up, fandom? My name is Josh, and today we've got a fun episode for you. Uh, first off, we've got Kelly from the Fanimated Podcast. Hello, I'm Kelly. I'm the host of Fanimated Podcast, another animation fan podcast. So definitely check it out. Uh, and joining us today, we have the creators of the Dragon Prince. We have Aaron A. Haas. Woo! Am I supposed to cheer? <laughs> I mean, you I can cheer. cheer you guys. It's Hello, fine. I'm Aaron. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having us. And we have Mr. Justin Richmond. Hi, I'm also glad to be here. I'm also uh, thankful that you you have us. Woo! <laughs> yeah, woo! Exactly. Yeah, hold yeah. on, hold on. We got this. I got this. Hold up. There we go. There yeah, we, go. we got it. Yeah, we yes, got it. Yeah, good. we're we're Gotta semi professional. We know how to yes. we know how to do things. Um, and John yeah. Cena is joining us as a surprise guest. Uh, <laughs> Whoa, I wish I had a John Cena. That would be super cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be talking about the Dragon Prince. So first off, uh, Aaron and Justin, just give us a little bit about yourselves. Who who are Aaron and Justin? <laughs> uh, uh, I'll start. Justin, I guess. answer uh, for I'm Aaron. Justin. Aaron, answer for Justin. Yeah, I think that would right. be fun. Yeah. Uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for real, do you want me to do that? I could probably do it. Okay. <laughs> go go for it. Go for it. Okay. okay. Uh, Aaron Ehas is a delightful individual. Uh, a loving man who walks long walks on the beach and bike actually loves bike rides. He does love bike rides. That's actually true. Uh, he was the head writer uh, and co executive producer on Avatar The Last Airbender. He worked on a little show called Futurama. He worked on actually a show that I really loved that no, he never takes credit for, which was Ed, the bowling alley lawyer, which I really like that show. Uh, and then he was also the creative director at Riot Games, which is where I met him. Um, and he's done a bunch of other fun stuff in his life as well. But that's that's his highlight reel. Did I miss anything? Oh, man. So am I supposed to do... How much of your resume should I do? <laughs> no, you can just do a little. It's Justin fine. Richmond is a family man, a great father and husband. <laughs> I don't know. Now I feel like I'm doing your eulogy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. this, I'm still alive. You're, you're sick, but hopefully it's not going to get that bad. That's I'll come right. up with better things that's for right. your eulogy if it comes down to it. Just okay, so good. That's good. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know. You're He's like a film school nerd and like a total science fiction geek who knows every single science fiction book and like the details of like the systems and fantasy systems and all that stuff. Um, and who's had an illustrious career in games and was uh game director on the uncharted series and uh then we worked together at riot on some secret projects and got to know each other and we're like hey we could make amazing stuff together let's do that and so um we left together to found wonderstorm together and i stopped talking about you but but that's just no, that's, that's good it was partner in crime and yes and uh that's right i don't know um, also, by the way, a uh, comment. No, never mind. I won't make the comment. But you ever <laughs> on, dating, on like dating sites, everyone always says they're looking for like their partner in crime and stuff like that. I feel like if like the police department just got on these dating sites, <laughs> they could stop they could, so much of the crime happening yeah. among single people. These look people <laughs> are just looking to commit crimes. Well, you also have to hold a fish. Yeah. So you also have to show that you've been fishing and you hold a fish. And that's how yeah, and I mean, you're looking for that's the crime. That's this the fish crime. is only 20, that's the crime. 20, 23 inches. It needs to be 26 inches. Look at me uh, stealing these fish. And you have to have like a, a quote from the office as like in there. Like that's like peak yeah. uh <laughs> like peak dating site. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so you guys uh have gotten together, you formed Wonderstorm. How does like the dragon prince kind of come into being? Uh, I'm, um, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Eric. Uh, well, so we knew, <coughs> and we formed Wonderstorm with our, our third partner, Justin Santa Steven, who's not with us today. Now it sounds like something's happened to him. He's alive and well. He's fine. Um, he's he's, he's working. He's, dark. <laughs> he's like ready for everyone's funeral. Um, but we knew kind of from the start that Wonderstorm was going to be a company that was going to build, and I hate the word franchise because it's sort of corporate, but we were going to build creative worlds that would be great for storytelling and great for building games. And that it kind of takes a certain mentality to kind of do that kind of world building and, and, and kind of have those kinds of characters and fantasies and things like that. And so as our first case to try to, to kind of prove our thesis that we could do that, um, we, we were creating the Dragon Prince. We, we said, okay, well, let's create this world of Zadia and this uh, specific magic system that had 
kind of the six primal sources that were kind of arcane and uh, kind of more natural in a way, but but rare and difficult. Um, but then this shortcut that like dark mages and specifically humans could could grab a, you know a, a creature that was magical and had kind of the magic within it, and just by kind of squeezing it and using it could could get a quick burst of great power with dark magic. And so we th that led to kind of all kinds of interesting implications for for the world. And then we just sort of followed through with a lot of those ideas and ended up with this divided consonant and all these things for the storytelling. But um, I don't know. That's that's kind of where we started. That's my quick sloppy origin story. <laughs> that's right. You can tell I didn't review any of the questions ahead of time. That's totally fine. That's so totally fine. I mean, started with we, coffee. Let's be really crystal clear we, here. We, we didn't yeah, expect. I was say, it started at Phil's. <laughs> yeah. Um. So so kind of going off of that. So what were some of your inspirations? So you've you've created kind of everything. Like what's What's like your your inspirations for? Was there was there anything in particular like like a book or something growing up, like something that you used to watch? Um, were you really into I don't know Star War and thought let's do that, but you know dragons? I mean, I think we both loved a lot of the same stuff. Although we both really liked another well, a show that we both really liked that we found out later on after we started working on the Dragon Prince was Robotech. Robotech, uh, which is yeah, Robotech's awesome. We've bonded over that many times. Um, if Harmony Gold wants to sell the rights to us for a dollar, we'll take it. Um, the uh, uh, no, I mean, I think it was a lot of stuff. I, I like Aaron was saying, I'm, I'm a big sci fi and fantasy nerd. We read a lot of stuff. Um, dun playing Dungeons and Dragons, like back in the day, I think was a big influence. Also, we both we both did that, not together, unfortunately, but. Um, but did that in our lives. And I think those things were big, but also just trying to figure out a new way to sort of, to do a fantasy that doesn't, that didn't, that didn't look exactly or feel exactly like a lot of the stuff that was already out there. Um, we're trying to make another weird way to say it. it's like trying to make something cool that like little, like 12 year old me would like <laughs> and watch with my parents and not be embarrassed by it uh, was another goal of, of the thing as well. Nice. Kelly? Yeah, uh, it sounds like you started basically with the world of Dragon Prince then before kind of like um, getting into the specifics of it, um, if I'm hearing that correctly. Um, then right. like what, which character, like what specific character like came first for you? Probably Viren, right? I mean, Viren. like yeah. we were kind of thinking about dark magic and, and how did dark magic work? And I think we, the first scene we worked on together was like, it was Viren kind of passing, kind of explaining dark magic to um, Claudia, but I can't remember if they were, if it was Claudia, if it was, it was, it was Claudia and Soren twins, right? It was Claudia and yeah, Soren. Yeah, they were twins. Yeah. They were and twins the idea was that one was quite good at magic and one really didn't get it, which sort of followed through, but he was explaining it in the scene by saying like, you know, well, there's, there's sun magic and fire magic and you can get these incredibly rare fire rubies that you have to travel the world to find just a few of them, you know, to create a fireball or, and then he reveals like a, a jar of emberback spiders and he pulls it out. And I think right away it was like the Claudia character was like taking it in her hand and squishing it. And was just like immediately prodigiously, like in his footsteps that I think that was the mm. first thing we yeah I think that's right and then we had some other cards on the board that were like not evil stepmom and some stuff that we that we that was up there nice. I can't remember there was some non-named characters I think not I mean, evil the... stepmom became Amaya it became Amaya no because, because became... Not, it was she was Pharisee for, a, for she a, was Pharisee that's right that's my wife's name we, yeah. we played around with but she was like no thanks and I was like okay <laughs> um so yeah that's right and then uh and you can still see some of that in the show. Like the, um, it's also a little bit how Runan does the the illusion spell to hide them in the first episode when they get caught. Is you know he crushes the rock and he does the the magic. Uh, Mystica Bora he does using the the moonstone and he we still kept a lot of that sort of idea. But we we really wanted to animate that scene, but we never figured out a way to to put it in the show. Unfortunately, flashbacks, flashbacks, always flashbacks. <laughs> Yeah, flashbacks are tricky. I, I will say, I, you know, having worked with Aaron for a while now, like Aaron is very particular about flashbacks in a very good way. Um, it's hard to do flashbacks 
well and have them be meaningful and have them tell a good story. Um, and, and I think early on, there was a bunch of talk about some flashbacks we could do. And it's like, we're not doing an episode of flashbacks yet. Like it's too soon. And then we got into when we did the first one, it was like, okay, this is going to be a very specific episode. that's telling a story through a lens of a flashback. And I think that that's a huge lesson I took from, from Aaron, from writing styles, um, from his writing styles. It's very particular. Now we do flashbacks, all they're going out of style, but <laughs> they're still very particular. I mean, f- like full flashback episodes and, and musical episodes, that's a season five thing anyway. So we're going to have to wait for that. Um, <laughs> that's right. That's but right. J- Jason doesn't know that Viren's like the first character, right? Does he know that? Because I don't think we should oh, we tell him because like yeah, his should. head will get his bigger. Gonna be, yeah, like yeah. he's already like pretty intolerable whenever he's on this show. So, I mean, like, if we could, like, n- you know, not let him know that, that would be I think be he amazing. might know that. I feel like we may have told him at some point, but maybe not. I don't know. Um. So, what were some... So, so Viren's our main character, our, our, our first character. Our main character as well. Um. So, Viren's like kind of our first character. What were some of the inspirations for, like, some of the other characters? Well, random piece of information, not random, but, like... uh. The if you're familiar with Arcane, the brilliant artist and art director Katie D'Souza uh, from Riot, who um, created Jinx, um, also helped us create Claudia. She's the first one who did concept art for Claudia, and, and um, so she was helping us find someone who was quirky and funny but also had some darkness and an ability to go pretty deep um how's claudia who else do you do you remember the early days of uh well i mean ct chrysler who we hired now works for us but before he worked for us he did some sketches of i believe he did rayla and runan you should tell the story of how we got to work with Caleb. how how that we we, i mean i'm gonna blow i mean basically Caleb loves, uh, I, I know I'm going to blow this. Is it International House Pancakes or is it Denny's? I can't remember he which way. He loves pancakes, but IHOP. He loves pancakes, IHOP. He loves IHOP. So we were like, let's take this guy out to IHOP. And He's a brilliant artist and we just yeah. wanted to work with him at any any price. Yeah, any and the price so, was yes, IHOP. That price was pancakes. <laughs> and it turned out the actual, our first large office that we rented actually was like a block away from an IHOP. And I think that may have adjacent. pushed it over the edge. Yeah, it was IHOP adjacent. That's right. But he did, uh, yeah, he did a Runan. I believe he did a Runan. He definitely did a Rayla. I think he might have done a Runan early. He did, a, he definitely did a Soren early. Um, I think Runan was a Hannah special, but I don't know. That might have been a Hannah special. No, you're but he, you be right. He did passes on all the characters and his style became kind yeah. of the house style for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Bait was a bunch of, actually a bunch of people did took cracks at Bait where we did like, because I have a little tiny uh, Boston Terrier um, that was crazy. And we we're like, oh, crazy little dog, like a bulldog or something like that, combined with like a, an amphibious whatever. And we actually, there are a bunch of, a bit like, of grump, old, grumpy cat, right? Grumpy cat. Yeah, exactly. Grumpy cats in there. And like, there are a bunch of old concepts that we never used for bait that someday we'll have to bring back. It's like other creatures or something. Um, people really wanted to draw bait when we talked about them. <laughs> so. Um, well, has, didn't we have an early piece of art with bait that said like if a tree falls in a forest i hope it hits you it was just like yeah i hope, I hope it hits you yeah I don't, right. or something like that yeah 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 um have there been um any like surprising episodes like an episode that surprised you um when you saw the final product compared to um when you were working like on the script I mean, they're all they're all so good when they come back. Like <laughs> the team up at Bardell is really the directors and and of storyboard artists. And I mean, I think the one for me was the the one when well, there's I mean, you have spoilers now, but you, it's from the first three seasons. So sorry, it's been three years. You can I'm, I'm calling a moratorium on spoilers. Uh, when Thunder dies, when Thunder gets turned to stone, uh, and when that came back in the animatic it wasn't that it was different it was just like once we got the music and the and, and the the one tear and the reaching and oh my god that like that just broke me up that was a that's still one of my favorite episodes it was a, it was a great episode i don't know aaron there must be other ones though 
No, I mean, for me, like all the time, it's, it is always the, it's the music pass. It's when we, we get it back with Freddie's music that is all, that it always comes to life again. So animation, you know, the process is so like, you're going from, you know, eight different passes on the script to then you're getting storyboards and you're doing multiple passes on the boards and the animatics. And then you go to, to layouts and from layouts to primary animation to secondary. So it's like, it's this like step process of just squeezing all the like love out of you, like incremental incrementally. So that you're like, Oh my God, like, I don't even remember what was, what was this story about? I just remember kind of all the scenes we've been tweaking over and over again. And so for me, like you get lost in the in the trees and then you see the forest again when the music comes so it's like when freddie does his music past that's when i i i see the story again for the first time so all the episodes come to life again when i when i see it with with freddie's music and like throughout the entirety of like the animation production there's a lot of pieces that come in different people like uh uh, bringing more to the story um but also like you kind of have to you know cut things down and change things as it goes um is there anything that you really really miss that you had to like leave on the cutting room floor okay Callum there was supposed to die in episode two but i mean we, yeah, we right. had to <laughs> We had it's to like pivot. the original Lost, you know, if you ever read the original Lost script, you know, the, the guy, the character that uh, Matthew Fox plays was supposed to die in the first episode. It was like, it was crazy. Uh, anyway, uh, there was an entire run of Harrow dirt jokes in uh, early in season. I don't remember what episode that's in, but like where they're talking it's about going to the Grand Lodge. Doesn't he say you, you could build a dirt man? You can build a dirt like man stage, but there yeah. was like a whole page of that stuff. And it was funny. It was very, and we were, I think we actually recorded it. I know we didn't shoot it, but, or, or animate it, but, but I think we recorded it. It was very, very funny. Um, right. Cause I remember, I remember that, it got yeah. to like, he's like, I don't know if these are good jokes, dad. And he, he does another one. Yeah, he goes now. You're just digging the hole deeper, and, and now you're digging you know, the hole deeper. Hole yeah. digging contests. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, that's, that's right. Cut. That was it. That was the. That was yeah. <laughs> that, that all got cut, uh, which was very funny. Um, but generally speaking, we don't cut tons of stuff. You know, we try to be pretty efficient in the because we don't get a lot of ch- uh, shots at at redo. We don't have a ton of board revision time, so we try to be pretty. And by efficient, I mean like trying to make sure that we're not sometimes we'll record stuff that we're like, okay, this, this could be a cut, you know, if we had to, but we ideally would keep it. Um, but we try to, to not do that. We try to record what we hopefully are going to see on screen. And then we do, sometimes we'll do like a re-record where we'll pick up a couple lines or something, but it's never, I don't think we've ever redone an entire scene. Maybe we have, but I, I don't remember, I don't remember a specific scene where we had to like redo the whole thing. Have there been in, in the first, in the first four seasons, um, has there been something that maybe that you've not recorded or anything like that, but like an idea that it was like, you know what, this is just like a little bit too, a little bit too much. We're going to have to like tone it down just a little bit. Um, has there been anything like that? Other than, you know, when Ezrin gets his arm cut off in, in the second season, we won't really talk about too much about that, but you know, <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. I'm thinking of something from from season seven, but we can't talk about that yet. But uh, um, I mean, you can. I mean, I'm yeah. not going to stop yeah. you. But <laughs> what have we? Uh, it's minor stuff. I mean, like uh, we had, you know, on the first three seasons, we had George Lentino as our um, our standards and practices person that helped us out, who had also worked on Avatar. And I think Aaron did an interview with them with him not long ago. Um, right. Yeah, it's really inter- interesting. We we were we had a chance to actually talk about how creative partnership with SNP has worked for us because he uh, we we use SNP as creative partners to help us tell the story we want in a way that's as deep as it can be, but also appropriate for kind of the family audiences who also love the show. So yeah, so oftentimes it would be literally something like, okay, they can have oh, there needs to be, there can be blood in this shot, but not in the shot. Or it can be shown like, you know, very similarly to this, but not like this. Or like, I mean, we got away with some crazy stuff for sure. Like, you know, I mean, Casey gets shot in the eye, like 
you know, there's there, uh, you know, Viren gets stabbed through the chest, you know, like some serious stuff goes down. And I think it's all tasteful. Like, I don't think there's anything in there that, I, or I was not ashamed to show my children for, you know, the, the show, um, a bug crawls out of Viren's throat. I mean, you know, people get dissipated. <laughs> there's, I'm not just listing <laughs> off violent acts in the show, but it's not like the whole show is like this, but, um, but no, I don't think there was ever anything that was like, oh, we got to tone it back. It was much more like, how are we going to show this in a way that still gets the impact that makes sure that it's not, you know, just gross or bloody or, or what have you. Uh, um, kind of spinning off of that is, has there been anything where you were surprised that you were able to get away with it? Almost everything yeah, on I that mean, list. Like, <laughs> what? what you Almost everything, everything I just listed off. I was like, wow, I can't believe they're going to do that. Wait, did you mention the like, the the caterpillar emerging yeah like coming out of his throat yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah in season three it's like Devin, uh, yeah it's gruesome but even Devin like was like, like sewing his eyes it. shut some of like the body horror in season three is really like yeah. okay i guess we can do it the jump scare oh i know one where we had to, we did have to change it was the um it was only because it it was actually horrifying it was horrifying in the boards like if something's horrifying in the boards you know it's too much and it was when uh the the illusionary spider has encased an illusionary person uh and when that gets cut open when really cuts that open in the original boards it was like a body fell out it was like it was like oh my god it was, it was and so i think in the final it's just dust you know i think it just kind of collapses there's no there's sort of a form to it but it, it immediately becomes apparent that it's not actually a person i think in the original it was like oh my god <laughs> it's like a guy in there so uh that one that one definitely got changed Kelly, you got one? Um, yeah, like uh, I, you're working on a lot of different things throughout the production process on so many different episodes. Like, is there a favorite part of the process um, for you? Is it the writing or is it like it working with the actors? We're like so tired right now. It's like, which part do we hate the least? It's sort of just like, <laughs> Production has been, I mean, we were really blessed to have a four season pickup, but part of that is like, boy, are we busy right now. What's what's the part you hate the least, <laughs> Justin? Part I hate the least. Uh, I love the writing. I mean, I think the writing is super fun. I, although in the room, you know, I'm just as much as everybody else saying like, God, I hate writing. I don't want to do this anymore. So. I've been, I'm sure you could quote me on that as well, but I really like the writing. My, uh, all the other stuff, I mean, look, every, every phase of it is really cool. Like when it comes back in the final animatic and like it's timed out and stuff, you're like, damn, that was, I can't believe we did that. <laughs> That's super cool. The direct and the stuff the directors add, like we lost Bonsberg is our series director you know, and, and George um, make awesome choices for, for stuff that like weren't, wasn't in the script or, or pitch ideas and things like that. They come back and oftentimes they're super cool and, um, getting to see those for the first time is really exciting. Um, and then the final renders are awesome. We're like, damn, man, I, I remember when he wrote this 10 months ago <laughs> and now we can finally see it. Uh, it's, it's nice. But I think my favorite is like the music, like Aaron said, when the music comes in, which is like the very, very, very end. Uh, it's always really cool. What's your least favorite, I guess, if reverse it on you, Aaron. What is my least favorite? Wait, sorry. Rephrase, oh. phrase the like phrasing. I think you were saying, what's the part you hate the least? I think right. is what you asked. Yeah. I don't know. Well, one part that I really do love is, is working with the actors. So the, 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 like the day of going through the script and like, you know, talking about it and talking about the moments, but even like the, we, we talk to them ahead of time about where their characters are going and what might be happening. And like often like, you know, Jesse pretty recently sent me a note about what he thought Soren would really do and why Soren's feelings might be like this. And we were like, you know, you're right. And let's think about that. And it totally like affected how we do things. So I don't know. Our 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 voice voice actors are great artists and great creators of of their characters. And um and I really get I get energized by the process of working with them. How has it been like from from a creative standpoint? Um, you you started off with just the Netflix series, 
And now the whole entire Dragon Prince like series has evolved into you've got comics, you've got books, you've got games, uh, you've got a Dungeons and Dragons basically role playing game. How how surreal is it to see how everything is kind of spawned? I'll tell you the weirdest moment for me was there were two moments where I was like, this is real. One was when we got the Funko Pops for the first time. And I was like, wow, we have Funko Pops. Like we've officially arrived. I know that like there's a Funko Pops for everything, but I was like, okay, this is a real thing. And then just two weeks ago, I went into Barnes and Noble to get something for you know Christmas presents or whatever. And um, and I walked past the board game section and the and battle charge was sitting there like front facing, like right in the middle of a of the shelf. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> so i think those were two like very surreal moments and uh, you know we have you know battle charges made by you know basically two local guys here um, johnny and and damn it now i'm forgetting his name and i feel terrible i'm so sorry I still love you I, uh, sorry johnny and chris i'm not no Johnny and chris chris sorry yes you're right chris uh, there you go thank you um and they made Battle Charge with us, basically. You know, they did all, all, all the work, but, like, they were playtesting with us over COVID. And um, and they're actually working on another game for us right now. And, like, it, it was such a cool collaborative process. And that's been the case for a lot of the stuff we've worked on. So, um, like, the all the graphic novels, the same way. We work directly with the writers. And um, the, the fandom uh, game, actually, you know, fandom made, or now it's Dire Wolf, but fandom made the, the TTRPG, um, which was... Yeah, that's like 300 pages, which is absolute madness uh, and really, really cool. Uh, so, but yeah, it's crazy. It's ridiculous, right? It's totally ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous that all that stuff exists. What about you, Aaron? What's been like one of the the weirdest things um, that you've, that, that have kind of spun off of uh, kind of like the series? Um, yeah, I mean, so Battle Charge has been a lot of fun and it, and it was a really fun partnership. Um it's been enjoyable working with Scholastic on um, a number of projects, including um, the novels series and also the um, the graphic novels. Um, but I don't know, like, I'm kind of like, just like a good bait plus just makes me happy. Things like that, that are pretty simple, but kind of from the, the world. Like my long-term hopes are that we get some Zadia foods out in the world in some cool way would be fun. We have some more interesting kind of in-world food items that are going to show up in the next couple of seasons, including, oh, like Viren mentions it. He's like, let's travel the countryside and try the seven cakes of Zadia. It's like, seven cakes of Zadia. I, want, I want to know what the seven cakes of Zadia are as someone who loves cake. So, um, I'm but, just yeah. a simple man who loves a simple bait plush. <laughs> a simple man who loves simple bait plush. Seven extraordinary magical and seven cakes. cakes. All, that's that's right. all I want. Um, so, so, what you mentioned uh, working with Scholastic. Are you guys in one of those like book orders, like from like the super yes. really thims? You guys are in book order. Yes. Okay. Yes. So now you've made it. That's like yes, that, to me. If, yeah, if I ever fair. made anything, that's my that childhood. Was, yeah. yeah. That was good enough to yeah. be in a book order. I've won. I've won. Yes. Yeah. They were. Um. Where we were in the, we were in the um the little flyers you're talking about, but also mm -hmm. in like the the fair when they sent them up. Oh, so, see, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I think I, uh, we're, we're going to take a, do some, uh, some fan questions here in just a second. Awesome. Um, but really kind of last <laughs> question, what is next for Wonderstorm and the Dragon Prince? Um, I mean, the next biggest thing is bringing the thesis to life and, um, bringing our, our video game out, the, the Dragon Prince video game. And so there'll be more announcements about that in the not too distant future, which we keep saying, but, but it's, uh coming coming very soon and um so yes dragon prince has these more seasons in the game and then you want to talk about what else wonderstorm is up to uh a lot of stuff peak um, something at comic-con we did we're we, hopefully we gonna did, release did, yeah good yeah no go keep going um so justin's we, like yeah you, you do it aaron you you yeah, do it. Sure. i don't, so don't want to got got this, yeah. <laughs> created yeah. a science fiction project that we're really proud of uh called Bonders, and we were able to sneak peek that at San Diego Comic Con last summer, and uh, to a, to you know a very intimate crowd of whatever it was, four hundred people, and it was really exciting. So we we did a about a fourteen minute short um, with some partners at at Epic and Hundred Thieves, 
And um, it's just a cool science fiction world and show. And and the short really just kind of introduces kind of the concept of the show and um, two of the main characters. And so hopefully uh, that's something that we will put out kind of publicly and wide in the next few months and find partners to build that as also as a game and a, um, and a show. And that one, we actually did the short in Unreal Engine with the intention of kind of long-term being able to build storytelling and um, games kind of both in the same engine, removing the technological seams between those experiences. So um, that's next, but there are also a number of other cool stories and worlds that we're working on with our team. And like, um, again, looking for the right opportunities to kind of scale them and deliver them to audiences. That's what we're figuring out. So um, Dragon Prince, obviously, here and arrived and and expanding and growing and uh but yeah bonders hopefully next and then uh, some others on on deck nice um okay so we've got some we got some fan questions for you guys um so this one is from uh hat kilimanjaro uh could we get an out of context spoiler for season five I think I have one. Do it. Ezrin will have a weird investment opportunity presented to him, which is which he is told will someday be three times as valuable as what his investment is today. Is that a fair that's one? That's good. To one. I like that. That's a good one. Okay. So that's whatever the Zadian equivalent of Bitcoin is. So <laughs> to be to be fair, fair, there is a we do have monopoly, and uh, and the the currency is is Bitcoin. <laughs> there you go, Bitcoin. See, there, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Uh, Kelly, do you have any uh, any questions from the audience? Um. We've got the from Words W Dragons. Um, will we get to see or hear more of what happened to Rayla during the time skip while she was away? A little bit in season five. We're, we're going to go to a place that she had been and, and has some knowledge of, but so she's able to kind of be the guide. But uh, yeah. Let me see. I think that's the main thing I'm thinking of. In yeah, season. that's right. Yep. Yep. If, for instance, I was somebody who wanted to get like a little bit more info on like maybe something that was going on in between seasons three and four, how just out off the top of your heads, like how would I go and possibly find that information? <laughs> Is this a, do you work for Scholastic? <laughs> yes. Yeah. They give me a cut. And <laughs> Uh, there is a there is a graphic novel um, called Through the Moon uh, that does discuss s- some of the happenings, uh, some of the earlier happenings in the in the time skip, um, particularly with Rayla and Callum and Ezra and Lujine. And that's kind of the initial kind of right after season three period. There's a period kind of between that and when season four starts that, in particular, there's a lot of interesting things happening with Claudia and with Rayla in Zadia. And um, that's, that's a story. I I hope we, we have some way to tell it at some point, but it's, it's a between story. So we're, we're really focused on the seasons right now, but, but we'd let, we'll get there. Nice. Kelly, you want to take the next one as well? Let's see. This is from at Hesbiana Maya. Uh, What will the ocean theme of season five represent? Um, That's a good question. (laughs) Uh, Have we said season five is ocean? I don't even know if we've officially said that. Yeah, I think so. I hope so. Okay. Okay. Well, (laughs) here we go. We just blew it. Sorry, everybody, if we just blew that. But uh, ocean... um, I mean, ocean's a lot of like, right? There, there's a lot of to go into ocean, right? It's it's there's a tor- there's a whole torment aspect to it, like a torrent aspect to it, right? That's like constantly changing, like right? the waves coming and like constantly crashing on the 
on the shore, you know, things that are oftentimes very deep and hidden, you know, are, are associated with the ocean often, oftentimes as well. The tides like changing, um, you know, off, you know, changing on a regular basis, stuff like that. Um, and then huge storms are also associated with the ocean. So I think there's a lot of, it's going to be a tumultuous season is what I'm going to say. I don't know. What do you think, Karen? I'm trying to find the, um, there's some super cool ocean stuff. I'm just going to say that there's some, there's some super cool ocean stuff. I'm trying to maybe, find maybe Alan some, ocean maybe some, uh, some ocean characters. I don't know. Maybe some characters who we've met who maybe have water in them, maybe returning. You never know. Yeah, maybe. I don't remember maybe the pirate's name. I, I forgot his it's name. It's Velos. Velos. And our, he is named after our series director, Vilas, who also worked on the first three seasons as a director. Oh, Spongsberg. Yeah. Vilas is amazing. Yeah. He's He's been on a couple of our episodes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Absolutely love him. Yeah. He's he's great. And uh, he's also a sailor in real life. In fact, when he was working on, I think he was still, he was living on a, a sailboat with his newborn child and his wife when he was working on season four. So wow, um, cool. he, is, he has since moved here and he's not on a boat anymore but he still races sailing boats all the time and i want to be the last when i grow up he's awesome um and i think we've got we've got one more question here which uh, for whatever reason this person thought it would be a good question um it's someone with the username at a boy simpson don't know who that could possibly oh, be oh boy um <laughs> but uh but at a oh boy Simpson's uh, good question was, "What's your favorite sandwich?" Oh, Jason, what's my favorite sandwich? I thought this. Was, by the way, my mom is watching, and I was like, "Oh no, did my mom write something embarrassing?" So I'm glad it was not her. Uh, hi, mom. Uh, let's see, my favorite sandwich. You know what? I'm gonna. I, this is easy. Uh, it's an obvious answer. There's a sandwich called the Godmother. It's Godmother at, at Bay City. At Bay City's yes, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, it's like the best sandwich ever, hands down. And it's it's basically a variation of a, what would you call it, Aaron? It's like an Italian sub, right? It's like I mean, an Italian sub. It's a little got some good spiciness to it and some yeah, good... spicy yeah, spicy Godmother mm -hmm. is like the greatest sandwich ever. Um, and they make them fresh every day. They're really really good. Shout so, out Bay Cities. So uh, shout out to Bay City and shout out to uh, <laughs> a boy Simpson for apparently a good question. I thought it was I thought it was terrible, but. <laughs> He he was like they'll like it. I was like, all right. Well, well, was there an answer he was hoping for? Was there a I don't know. We're supposed to think of when we think of like, Jason Simpson, like I don't know, poutine don't know. maybe something Canadian and large and hairy. I don't know. Last I mean, time we anyway. saw Jason, or, yeah, last time we saw Jason, we were eating pizza. So I don't know. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Uh, something something Simpson related. Um, we'll text him. Uh, all right. So uh, again, Aaron, Justin, Kelly, thank you all so much for for joining us. Uh, Kelly, where can people find you if they want to uh, find more of the uh, the Fanimated podcast? Absolutely, you can find Fanimated on all of your favorite podcasting platforms, and we are on Instagram and YouTube at Fanimated Podcast. Nice, uh, Justin. What about you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter for now, anyway, uh, at Wild Speculation. <laughs> Uh, or Justin Richmond, we'll find it as well. Um, and then our, our you know, there's the official Wonderstorm or dra at the Dragon Prince um, is the official Dragon Prince account. And it's on all the socials. It's on Insta and I don't know, wherever else kids go these days. I sound so old. It's on it's on all the things. It's on all the things. Yes, Tumblr's exactly. making a resurgence. So maybe we all got to mind back which to is Tumblr. Crazy. We do quite well on Tumblr, actually. Yeah, which is funny. Yeah. Tumblr is a pretty great place for fandoms. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, what about you? Well, well sorry, could you repeat the question? Where, uh, where are people, socials? Yeah, where can, we where, find where can you? people find you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, my MySpace, you can hear some <laughs> of my favorite songs. And uh, yeah, I don't know. What do, uh, I guess I'm doing Twitter. So I'm on Twitter at like at Aaron Ehaz. Right. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. I think that, I think, I think I that's, think that's where I'm, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I mostly retweet fan art and like cool stuff and like occasionally, occasionally talk about sandwiches. <laughs> I don't talk about sandwiches that much, but um, yeah, you will now. Like, yeah. Uh, so, so Aaron's got the, the get the MySpace. Uh, do you have your Geo Cities? Do you have your Geo Cities side that you want to pull up? <laughs> it's like Angel yes. Fire, it's Angel Fire site. 
yeah his blog is on there it's gonna be great oh man um yeah and uh you can find me on twitter and instagram at josh l kane you can find the podcast on instagram at what's up fandom and on twitter at what's up fandom pc for podcast um check out our anime podcast which is the anime book club on instagram and anime underscore book underscore club on uh twitter so you can check us out there um get all your animated everything we've we're doing chainsaw man and spy family Every week, every new episode. So it's a it's a thing and a half. Um, but we're doing it. Um, you can also listen to this podcast wherever you download podcasts and check out our video content up on YouTube. We're going to put the links for everybody down below. So you can check out Kelly, you can check out Aaron, and you can check out Justin. And we'll go ahead and throw some links to uh, Netflix on there so that way you can watch The Dragon Prince. If for whatever reason you listen to this and haven't watched any of The Dragon Prince, why um but yeah we'll definitely throw that in there so you can click on that um but again everybody thank you so much for joining me thank thanks you so much, much. thank All you right. no problem uh, so for uh, what's up fandom i'm josh I, i'm justin i'm aaron oh, oh. oh we're all supposed to go <laughs> i'm i'm justin <laughs> i'm aaron and i'm kelly bye everybody <laughs> the point.